lose my shit. Not everybody yeah. has initiative these <laughs> days. I mean, I'm glad there, there, there are many people in this, in this organization who are solid like a rock, just as strong as they can. El garote de pepe. I would say you're one of them. I'm soft as a motherfucker I would say, right I would now. say it, you're one of them, unless it comes to, would you please, please change the title to the fact that you edited the fucking video. And then you give it that rim rub. Okay, so you I, get a I love the, a good rim rub. You give a little, on, get a little on the palate with get your rim rub. Get a little on the palate with every little, little. Stake your claim down in the comments if you are uh, rocking a labia. <laughs> on our Hockey Talk <laughs> podcast. Well, nothing gets Celtic. me harder than Viking war drums. <laughs> yeah. Russia writes. Aliens. 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 How is your old-fashioned, Nolan? It's delightful, Jacob. Nice. Is it, it is. uh little little bitters? A little um what else goes in that? A little vermouth. I've been out from behind the back of a bar for no, no quite vermouth. a long period of time. No vermouth. No, no vermouth. So that's the, a Manhattan. That's a that's Manhattan. Manhattan. Yeah, so the way right. the way I like to make my uh old fashioned for those at home who when might I take one more quick guess. Yeah. Muddled sugar and a maraschino berry, if you will. A maraschino cherry, but a, not a, a kirscht, a brandy kirscht cherry. Is yeah. that right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Carry on. Uh, the way I like to make my uh, old fashioned, you take your sugar cube, throw it in there. Okay. Seven to eight dashes of uh, Angost bitters? Angostura bitters. Oh, seven to eight? Seven to eight. Do you use orange bitters or just your old fashioned traditional bitters? I just use the Angostura. Because no, Angostura makes orange bitters too. I know. Okay, but I'm just talking about traditional. Just Angostura. the traditional. I got it. Yeah. Got it. Because I really get in there with that orange peel and the orange juices. Uh, you need not an orange flavored bitter because no. you get in there and add that bittered flavor. I get to it all in there, and then you give it that rim rub. Okay, so you. I, get a I on love the, a good rim rub. You give a little. On, get a little on the palate with get your rim rub. Get a little on the palate with every little taste. But I take that uh, seven to eight, muddle up. Really, really get in there. Really yep. muddle up that sugar. Really let it know who's boss. Really yep. start the process. Give it a little who's your father, if, if you, you will. will. Yeah. Or if you won't. Perhaps. Or if you do. Or, or if, if you, you don't. don't. <laughs> <laughs> Simple, it's not. I'm afraid you will find for a mind maker upper to make up his mind. Um, all right, cool. Uh, why is there a, uh, a weapon of mass destruction sitting on the table, Nolan? Because I didn't want it pointed at my penis. Ah, uh, very nice. Yes. It is quite... I would say that that is... You, uh, for those of you that don't know here on the two way program, should we invite them in right now? Would this would be a good idea. Come in. Come in. Welcome to the two way procast or the two way broadcast. broadcast. Yeah, am I right? It's a who, sausage fest up in this who pitch. Air you are. There might be a feline in here. Stake your claim down in the comments if you are uh, rocking a labia. Uh, we <laughs> we invite you. We invite you in. You are invited. Rock that labia, rocking sister. That, rocking that labia. If you are, uh, Jesus Christ. If you are from the Middle East, if you know what I'm saying. If you, <laughs> if you partake. And she's gone. <laughs> <laughs> and the one we had is gone. Yeah. If you, uh, oh, if you dabble in that monostat, you know what I mean. If you get a little cheese on the taco. If you dabble in the uh, and the, the feminine dark magics. Mm-hmm. Indeed. It was funny. Ryan and I were going, ah, oh, fuck. We were supposed to invite Ryan on the podcast. Oof. Two weeks. Two weeks in a fucking row I was supposed to invite Ryan on the fucking podcast. And we didn't. That Ryan's a cool dude. So, he's a really cool guy. With a really cool last name. Wolf. Wolf. It's pretty sick, dude. And yeah, and he's uh yeah, he was a uh we we just uh hired him on. He just joined a part of the Tacticon team not too long ago. And this dude is a pretty high speed, low drag individual, if you will. Yeah, he's, he's three foot eight <laughs> <laughs> and wears nothing but baby oil. And really easy to drag, and that's what we meant by that. So uh <laughs> that's that's actually pretty funny, dude. Thanks. I'll give that one to you. I'll Thanks, hand that dude. to you. Um yeah, no, he he came with uh he came from well, unfortunately, the Air Force, but the yeah. highest speed part of the Air Force you we'll possibly let him tell could. Let story. It'll be funner that way. It'll be way better that way. He's a he was a special operator 
And therefore, what he will be saying probably every other three minutes is back in the teams, back in the teams, back in the teams. Back in the team. So we apologize in advance, but we were having this. Uh, no, he really is high speed. He's a cool guy. Um, we were having a conversation uh, this morning, back and forth via text, and he he uh, sent me this. Wow, I have so many Ryans in my phone that ta- typing in Ryan wasn't enough to populate his name. Well, get off Grinder. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> fucking touche all right um so we've got a <laughs> he sent me this article about my uh the unit that i was in with the 173rd airborne brigade uh it says 173rd airborne brigade has an all-women jump the un- the 173rd airborne brigade participated in an all-women parachute jump called in the juliet drop zone in italy march 14th 2024 and that's all he sent me. That's That was it. No context, no nothing. And I was like, and then I said, I'll just read the conversation because it was kind of fun. I'll say, I said, well, isn't that just hashtag totes adorbs? <laughs> Laughy emoji face. I said, squandering military resources for a publicity stunt. And then I said, at least they aren't Hollywood jumps. Looks like they at least had all their kit or at least most of their kit. Like the ruck sets. Hollywood jumps are when you jump and you don't have anything on you. For those of you that uh, don't know what that means, it just, they, they just, you jump. just jump. You just jump yeah. out of the plane. Like Nothing you were more. a skydiver um, instead of a military person. He said, uh, uh, hold on, I want to make sure this is appropriate for YouTube before I read it. Of course, we could edit it out. An actual operation in the name of women rights, that's even more fun to name. So I said, let's try to name their unit, their operation, their location. And it was this unit. Beta Battalion, Operation, Estrogen Evasion, <laughs> Location, Middle Yeast, uh, another fun one, Unit, My Doll Militia, Operation, Labias in Libya, <laughs> Platoon Nickname, Angry Beavers, <laughs> but it doesn't stop there. He retorted, Unit, Tampon Platoon, Operation, Free the Nipple, Plat- Platoon Nickname, Ferocious Feminists, Unit, <laughs> Cook Company, Operation Clam Slam. Pl- I like how that's the one that you like. To, you took like like you're like Cook Company. Yeah, that was <laughs> Clam <laughs> Slam good. is good, dude. You had just combat cooks. Well, what else would it be? It's a bunch of women jumping in a cup. I'm just joking. This is all joke. It's all in the name of comedy. Except um, women aren't in combat uh, MOSs. They aren't. So it's actually real. Unit Cook Company Operation Clam Slam platoon nickname Sna- Snail Trail. Ah, <laughs> uh, fuck. Nice. Uh, he said all this joking and I fl- forgot my laptop. I'll be a few minutes late. That would explain why I didn't read these yet. I, I just thought last night. that would explain why he was in, uh, he was in traffic next to me coming in at eight 30 instead of eight. You are forgiven young Padawan. Um, <laughs> anyway, fuck <sighs> back to the matter at hand. I've never seen so many Dominican women with cinnamon tans. There is a weapon of mass destruction on the desk, yeah. of which you and I went actually and shot in the uh, in the ballistics lab yesterday. And I, dude, you know what? I was thoroughly impressed. Pressed. You've taken what would be a generic Glock 17 and uh, made it not a Glock 17 anymore. Pretty much in the course of one day. Yeah. So well done. It's pretty good. What is on here? So what is, what are, what are we doing here? Let's talk because this is like two way pro. We yeah. talk about guns we talk oftentimes. About, so let's talk about guns. What did we you talk do? about? Stuff. What did you do to it? So I just want to give a big shout out to, uh, Arc Division. <laughs> oh shit. There he goes. <laughs> my boy Patch. <laughs> my, my boy Patch. I'm a shill. <laughs> <laughs> He's not. This there was nothing nothing paid. But no, products no, were no, but products not. were given. Yeah. Literally not in exchange for anything. He was just like there it goes. There it goes. See ya. <laughs> so this is uh this was sent to me by uh my uh my now new best friend, Patch, over at Arc Division. Little Patch Adams, Little Patch thank you Adams. for that. Uh he runs a company called Arc Division, and they have possibly the coolest slides on the market. That is uh, pretty badass. Dude. It's it's fucking sick. I found out about these through Tackett. Okay. And then I was like, hey Tackett, get me in contact with Patch, because I want to make him feel special. And Get one. Did you give him over the pants, Andy? Eye contact or no eye contact? We're about to, you know, 
throw a V8 in a Isuzu <laughs> Migo and grow out mullets and drive on the beach forever for the rest of our lives together, okay? Yeah. <laughs> We're going places. All right, fair enough. This doesn't work between us. <laughs> no, but uh, what's cool about this is it is integrally comped, so like the uh, 365 Macro is, got a sweet cut on top. I think this is a, a new version he's coming out with because mm -hmm. it's all kind of like glossy and reflecty and almost Dude, a little rainbowy. That coating it's is... Like, uh, it's sick. That is beautiful. It's yeah. fucking sick. It really is. And then I put a little prairie four on the top. So that thing shoots super flat. What it was shoots it? flatter than your sister's chest. Which is that's their motto. That's in their great. marketing, and that's yeah. my kind of people right there. Yeah. Yeah. No, she's a beauty, dude. He uh he opened up the conversation. So we hadn't had communication back and forth yet. Patch opens up the talk with me. I don't have his number in my phone. So it's a random number that gets messaged to me and he says, Here I I'll I want to read it to you. This is how he opens it up. He says, Nolan are you looking for local singles in your area? <laughs> These MILFs are willing and ready to be split, spit roasted by you and the boys. This ad is provided and collected data from your Google search history. Who doesn't want to do business with that company? <laughs> <laughs> I immediately responded and said, subscribe. <laughs> he said, best answer possible. And then I said, who is this? He goes, Patch Arc Division. That's my full name. <laughs> you didn't even know who the fuck you <laughs> No! <laughs> Subscribe, dude. That's fucking rad. Yeah, so I love it. So if you guys are wondering, like, how to do marketing, do it like, like that. Like that. It's <laughs> fucking, fucking great. legit, He's man. great. I've heard all the guys there at his shop are fucking great. They make stuff for all the Glock platforms, the uh, 365, the 320. They're fucking sick. Check it out. It's dope. Yep. It's it's a beautiful piece of artwork. Um, this is not sponsored by them, but I just want to say thank you because yep. I appreciate it well, and I do, love man. it so much. We fucking uh, because help out other companionships at, at Tacticon, at 2A Pro, yeah, at Tacticon Armament. We are not sponsored by anybody because if we're going to suck dick, it's going to be for love and not for money. <laughs> yep. That's it. That's it. That's the sales That bitch. makes me a cheap date. <laughs> right. All day. Yeah. Per day. I do. He loves crab cakes. I do want to sponsor something, if I may, yeah. for all of you guys that are that are listening. And I've got there, is there's it our actual. Own thing? Yeah, no, it is. It's ours. Well, it's that, ours. Then yeah. it's not. And it's not the fucking two A Pro course because that's not even close to being done yet. So I'm not even going to bring it up this uh, this episode. We're going to pretend like that never happened. <clears throat> Cut it. Um, <laughs> Cut it. No, but the thing is, is like uh, we've got we've got something juicy uh, in the works right now. Juicy. For than you an actually apple? listening to. Uh, to the podcast, you'll know it is a la -la 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 liquidations that we're doing spring cleaning. We are cleaning for spring. And uh, when we started inventorying, we realized we have a metric fuck ton of inventory that uh, is still here and I don't want it to be here anymore. Bye. And so, yeah. Okay, bye. I think we're doing like 70% off or something retarded like that. Hot. Am I allowed to say the R word? Yeah. Okay. No, um, we've taken it back. Oh, we've taken it back. It's I a thing now? So. Okay, yeah. sweet. Yeah. I, th I think we're working on another one that I definitely can't say. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> well, so much for this getting monetized. Um, nah, dude, I can cover my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> we're good, dog. Um, working on that one. Working on that we're one. We're not back in 2001 just yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to go and I'm going to clip in from the first Fast and the Furious movie. Yeah. When he says that to Paul Walker, I'm just going to clip that in. <laughs> it wasn't you. It wasn't me. It was Hollywood. Just tell her what the wasn't you. It was you. acceptable <laughs> previously. <laughs> it was it was acceptable previously. And really in any Eminem rap song. So Yeah. Yeah. He likes that That's one. That's a good point. The bomb, yeah. Uh, who else starts out? Tupac. Hit him up. Oh, so does I, he? Yo, bitch, you... Oh, no, nope. no. Nope. It was just nope. fat. It was, fat. it was fat, fat motherfucker. motherfucker. Mm -hmm. I thought he threw out the other F-bomb. No, there. he didn't. He no. didn't, yeah. I don't know if he's ever... I don't remember Tupac. Um, you know, I'm a big uh, Tupac aficionado, if you will, and I don't know if I've ever actually I don't think the, I've ever heard him say that. What's crazy is I'm a Tupac aficionado. I'm also a George Strait aficionado, Sammy Kershaw. Like, I'll go, like, old school country. That's called bipolar disorder. Probably. Yeah. You know what is interesting about music is... I will choose the music depending on what I'm doing. If it's working out, right? If I'm in the gym, makes, I got to get aggressive. If I'm sense. getting aggressive, I'm going gangster rap or metal, something of the sort. If I'm or 
or early 2000s EDM or <laughs> depending early, on the mood he's in. Yeah, I guess it really doesn't matter what I'm doing or who I'm with. These are just the things that I do. Um, so, sorry, my phone was going off. Unforgivable. I know. Um, where where was I a long time ago? Music. No, before that. Oh, we're like selling a lot. Oh yeah, I yeah, need music. So, cleaning. but depending on what you do, let, let's talk about music though, real quick. It, it's 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 important when I'm doing yard work or you know the Lord's work, which is really just any sort of construction. It's got to be honky tonk, man. Like nothing, oh, dude, yeah. nothing but the country, and not that new tractor <laughs> rap bullshit, man. No. I'm talking about like '90s fucking country and prior. Yeah, you know the good stuff. And there are a guy, a few guys keeping that shit alive, you know. And I'll give, I'll give it to like. Ah, you know, Jason Aldean's doing a decent, a decent job of keeping it alive. He's kind of got a little Garth Brooks vibe going on. Uh, but you get into like Florida Georgia Line and dudes like that. And you just, you got to appreciate the music for what it is and just don't try to call it country because it's fucking not, it's pop. Well, th so. well, that's what I, that's, you know, on our country podcast. <laughs> <laughs> on our hockey talk <laughs> podcast. Well, that, that's what I kind of realized the other day was uh, I was listening to some country radio. And really? uh, yeah, and I didn't it, know you participated in that. I participate in pretty much all music. Yeah, I very know. much similar. To I you. came in the other day uh, on a Saturday to work, and you were working out, and there was some Viking music going yes. on in there. Nothing there gets Celtic. me harder than Viking war drums. <laughs> yeah, I know. Try it. I I feel my ancestors. You were hitting the like I just I felt the concussion from the heavy bag you were hitting from the other room with the Viking music happening at the same time. It's a good and, time. Yeah, I just kind of let it stop before I went in there to say. How do you do? Yeah. Because I was not in that mood. <laughs> I just, well, I just realized like you were in that, I was in a completely different mood and then you were probably in on the other side of the door because the gym is on the other side of my office. And yeah, you were, uh, you were getting it, man. You're getting after it. I was, I was trying. Yeah. I was trying. That's for sure. But back to country. Cause that's the most important thing here yep. in this country podcast. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> No, it's obviously music changes, right? The times change, old man. But yeah. I do enjoy, and it kind of clicked with me, how they call it new country now. Mm, yeah. Because I'm okay. like, yeah, because it's not. I'm like, you're right. That's not country. It is. Yeah, you're it's right. It's new country. Yep. It's in the country subgenre. Yeah. There's a song called Country Ain't Country anymore, and it doesn't even sound like the I, old country. I wrote that song. Yeah. Oh, did you? No. That's amazing. You I know, the only reason face. I picked up a guitar was to write country music. Did Deep secret that you guys don't know about me that I really want to share with you. A deep, it's not a dark secret. It's just, it's not even a fucking secret. It's just, I've never really told it a whole lot of people. Jake is Carrie Underwood. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. <laughs> and I'll, and I'll slide my keys into the side of your pretty little souped up four wheel drive. I believe that's a s lyrics identical. from her song. <laughs> Is that? <laughs> I sound identical. Maybe next time you'll think before you cheat. Okay. Okay. Before you cheat on me. Don't with, act like you don't. With brands like. Don't act like you don't know the songs you wrote. <laughs> <laughs> don't act like you. <laughs> um, <sighs> thoughts and words. Where was I going? Deep secret. Ah, yes. It's a deep secret. It's not like a secret that I try to keep from people, but the only reason I picked up guitar which I still play and dabbled on this. I tickled the ski steel a little bit today, if you will, uh, was to write country music, man. I really, I wanted to, and it's still like this deep seated aspiration of mine to, uh, I've written a couple, uh, country music songs and it's, it's one of those things where I want to write them and then give them to a worthy, uh, uh, country music star who's going to do them justice like old school country music kind of guy, you know, well, I just, there, there's one dude on the market and I saw him on social media and I should have followed him. And then he went away forever when the algorithm oh, kicked him that's off. The worst. I know. And I've been looking for him ever since, but he really does have this, like, uh, uh, he's got this, like all the songs that he sings and writes himself are actually like, um, like nineties country. He reminds me a lot of, um, uh, he reminds me a little bit of John Anderson. Do you know who that is? No. Don't. I was trying to think if I knew Don't ask her. Him. Don't ask her on a straight tequila night. Mm, oh, don't yes. Don't ask. He's yep. real twangy. Yep. On Super a straight twang. tequila night. Um, yeah, man. It's all, it's all I really want to do with my life, but here I am. When I finally say something that is too unacceptable for the internet and mm -hmm. we burn this company to the ground, okay. 
I will join you. <laughs> <laughs> I will help you achieve yeah. your goal. Will you be my roadie? I will be your roadie. Oh, I, I don't want to be a, the, the star. I just want to write the fucking music. Yeah. Yeah. You'll go to Nashville with me, though. Yeah. All right. Cool. We'll go to Nashville yeah. together. We'll leave our lives <laughs> behind. The children, the women, <laughs> leave them behind. We're, We're going to Nashville. Them. We're going to Nashville. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, All right. <laughs> but I do want to say one more thing. Okay. When you were saying when you were doing yard work, when you mm. were doing the Lord's work, I saw a video today. Hilarious. So, you know, those like fake podcasts or not even fake podcasts, but the podcasts where these people are giving like financial advice. Oh, yeah. And right? they're not actually in a podcast. They just yeah. pretend like they are. So this was yeah. one of those. It was okay. these two Aussie guys. Yeah. Um, and he was going, how do you start? He goes, Bill Gates doesn't mow his lawn. Jeff Bezos doesn't do his laundry, right? And he's talking about like all these menial things. Yeah. He said like somebody else and he doesn't do his dishes. He's like, they hire people, okay. they outsource, they leverage other people to do it for them <laughs> so they can capitalize on making money. He's like- Was this serious? Were they being serious? No, they were joking. Oh, they were, okay, okay, joke. cool. Yeah, it was a complete joke. And he's like, and I've started doing the same thing in my own life. I've now hired someone to sleep with my wife. <laughs> it's the ultimate efficiency. Yeah, and he goes, anything in my life that does not equal revenue is a waste of time. And he's like, the other guy is like, but doesn't that make you a cuck? He goes, no. He goes, inefficiencies lead to the downfall of business. He's like, he goes, it's fucking rad. He goes, anything that does not equal profit Waste of time. <laughs> and, then, and then it cuts back to the other guy. He goes, makes sense. It makes sense. Yeah. There's a dude. It's that, so good. Dude. There, it might have been the same guy because there's a guy right now that's like going out and like mocking all of like the uh, the guys. He, he specifically mocks guys that go do sales training. Like there's a couple big ones on social media. Uh, I forget the name of the two two dudes that are actually doing a lot of like sales training. If you guys ever follow them, then you'll probably know who they are. But it's basically all they do is just they sit in front of a classroom full of people and they show you basically how to sell used cars, which is supposed to convert into sales for every other industry, apparently. But there's no fucking way like watching at it that I could ever or watching at it words. Um, there's no way watching it that I could ever take those tactics and walk into a gun shop, for example, and try to sell them my product. My products. It's just, it's, it's so bad. If you can sell a used it, car, dude, it's just so fucking bad. You can and, sell tuna to a fisherman. But there's a dude that like literally mocks him and it's fucking hilarious. Dude. And I, I think we need more of that just on the internet, really. Parody mm -hmm. people and like skip people who are parodying, par par parodying, par parodying, pa parodying, 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 parodying okay. these people and who are genuinely like unique and funny. Yeah. Thank you for upholding society. Yeah. I think you need more, more <sighs> credit for that. What it boils down to is we need more trolls. We do. Give me more trolls. We need more trolls. We just need people to be a little bit thicker skinned and just be a little trollier. Let's talk about the most current event that you brought up to me. Diving on your straight way, in. Diving straight in. Shit. Russia is going to war. That's it. Again. Uh, so as of <laughs> about like three hours ago or so, I don't know, my timeline's a little muddy. Uh, I've been staring at a computer screen for eight hours straight. You have. Um, Russia, yeah. as of about three hours ago, had a terrorist attack. A small terrorist cell of individuals went into a theater concert hall kind of yeah. thing, as from what I have read, and they started shooting up the place and then set that shit on fire. Uh, That's fucking bonkers. So yep. <laughs> what's crazy to me about this is in our age of disinformation that we live in, it's being spread like wildfire, obviously. There are videos already out of the shootings. There are There's video of the place on fire. Shit's fucking bonkers. There's already May 23rd, 2024, I stand with Russia. Like, oh, there's already people actually, changing their profile pics. I am the current thing. First yeah. off, <laughs> it's got to be thoughts like and I, prayers for fucking Russia. Yeah, naturally. You I'm know? sure if I good hit the, juju for Russia, if I hit the Facebook feed right now, it would be pretty much all that. Yeah, Go fuck yourself. Yeah. Thoughts and prayers for all human beings. Thank you very much. All yeah. right. Yeah. We just don't want innocent people dying. That'd be great. We don't. But what's fucking. Yeah. See. Oh, wow. I stand with Russia. I stand with Russia. Damn. It's already there. Already there. Damn. Moscow. Jesus. Um, what's ISIS? quote unquote, 
has supposedly <laughs> taken credit for it, saying, this is one of the things that I screenshot, who knows. ISIS has claimed responsibility for tonight's terror attack at the Crocus, I believe, concert hall in Russia, capital Moscow. They claim that the attack <laughs> specifically sought out a target of a gathering of Christians, mm. supposedly. Um, again, this is all from the internet, uh, Twitter. So take everything you're hearing worth a grain of salt. I'm just trying to shuffle through the information that is available on probably the better search engine, which is Twitter. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, and then here it says a security source told a mock, I believe agency Islamic state fighters attacked a large gathering of Christians in the city of yeah, I'm not going to pronounce that correctly. <laughs> On the outskirts of the Russian capital, Moscow, killing and wounding hundreds and causing great destruction to the place before they withdrew to their bases safely. Damn. Um, I've seen video. I don't know if it's recent, but apparently they caught one of the guys. Uh-oh. Yeah. That's yeah, not. He's going to the gulag <laughs> for sure after oh. a bad time. After a real bad time. Real bad time. Yeah, they're tortured the shit out of that yeah. dude trying to get some information. Oh, yeah. Because they got one, huh? More like war suggestions, not war crimes. Am I right? <laughs> um, there's a there's this post that says just two hours ago we got the breaking story: Islamic State ISIS claims responsibility for the terror attack in Moscow, and within two hours, the CIA, Mossad, ISIS, U.S., and Israel are all uh, trending on Twitter. Mm. Oh. So all those are oh, all the twi yeah. trending topics right now. Yep. Within two hours of it. Damn. Um, I will continue. Okay. And then we will jump in. There is a litany of copy pasta uh, titles, okay. posts that say the same thing, which say, why would ISIS attack Russia when Russia is the only global power that helps Muslim nations around the world? Question mark. Obviously bullshit, especially since ISIS is CIA slash Mossad. ISIS is... Hashtag ISIS, what a joke. Everyone knows it's not ISIS. And that is just copy-pasted. Damn. Well, I can imagine that it was a gun-free zone. <laughs> is that too soon? Okay. Um, <clears throat> I mean, really, though. Realistically. 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 They weren't able to defend themselves inside there. I mean, I'm, I'm speaking, it's not, not really a joke. It's, no. it's if, if there were armed personnel inside of that building, they would probably be able to defend themselves against people who, like, I don't know how many of them there were. I don't really have any details. You're the only person who's told me about this. Right. Cause I was also buried in my computer yeah. uh, for the last couple of hours. I, the so. only, I found out about this, the 30 minutes from you coming in here and filming. Oh, yeah. got it. Wow. That's that's when I gathered all this information. <clears throat> What's crazy is... <clears throat> do tell. Well, the whole event is nuts. Yeah. Just first off. Where do you think we're going from here? Um, Well, this... I, I One of my buddies put it really, really well, which is that people aren't really ready for what this kind of opened up. Yeah. Like, I think this mean this is something very significant is going to happen that is going to spark it's really, multiple nobody's events. Ready. I, uh, nobody's ready for what this is kind of the can of worms that opened. Oh yeah. Not only is it one potential potential global conflict depending on what happens in Russia's retaliation. Right. Russia's most likely going to retaliate. And this is right on the heels of there being some sort of like uh, potential six month ceasefire agreement between. Hamas and uh, Israel. Israel. Yeah. So Which I'll get into to... that in just a second. Okay. In, the, in the conspiratorial realm, the thought-provoking realm. Got it. Um, potential global issues, but not only that, my buddy uh, Shads, he put it really, really well, which is it opens up a can of worms of small group <sighs> terrorist cell attacks like this. Yeah. Just three, four dudes, trained or not, in a van, jumping out, wreaking havoc, hopping back in and dipping out. Yep. And if you don't think it can happen in the U.S., it is already 9-11. It, it's already happened multiple times in the United that's, States. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. It, it can happen anywhere. This And yeah. the fact that it's because happened we, in Russia Because we don't now, know, like, what we think it is. is like, oh, it's just this crazy guy with crazy parents that was, you know, that had... 
that had this, uh, you know, some sort of mental disorder. But the reality is, is none of us really know who was pulling the fucking strings nope. on that guy. Nope. We don't know who he was with, what type of units that he was in online, right? We don't Where he know. was getting his information, what type of propaganda he was being fed, or who was legitimately pulling the strings in that dude's life. We just think we know because we turn on the news and they tell us. We but don't know. I don't believe that for a fucking second. And if you believe what the news is telling you, yeah, then you're probably a sheep, I yeah. would suppose, you know? We don't know why the 16 year old 17 year old had a fully kitted out dod daniel defense with an eotech on it yeah that i can't even afford with my job right yeah how'd you get that how'd you get that oh, it was there, in my Baru? it was in my mom's it was I in my mom's burger safe. King. it was in my mom's safe and i worked at burger king your mom had that yeah your mom had that yeah sure okay okay uh, yeah because my, my mom's got a daniel defense so let's fully decked out let's go into some theory perhaps okay yeah let's go sure. into some thought provoking stuff um, I think, I think I can say this rather freely on the internet. Okay. Um, because they've been at war forever. Who's they? The Israelis and I don't want to say Palestinians. How do I put this? Israeli the Jews and, and the Muslims? Yeah. Okay. They've been at war for forever. All the time. Yeah. And they don't really like each other. Okay. They don't get really get along. Okay. Can we, do we, does everyone? Do we all, we all agree. Or we all agree that they don't get along. Right. Yeah. They've been like at war it. on and off for the past ever. Heads are nodding in the crowd right now. Yeah. They're like, mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. indeed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Give me a virtual nod in the comments. Yeah. <laughs> give me, give me that virtual mm-hmm. nod. <laughs> uh, what's interesting here is with Mossad trending and a lot of people are throwing out that Mossad is behind it and that CIA is behind it saying that it's ISIS, right? Say that. Mossad and the CIA either set ISIS up for it or making, pulling the strings on ISIS, something like that. Diving into that, let's play around with that for a second. It's a theory, right? Toy, toy with it. Let's toy with it. If you had a not only political and social, but religious enemy, how would you perhaps get rid of them in this day and age? Because if an well, unprovoked would- attack... Against a world superpower. You would then suffer the wrath by being the attacking force. Naturally. So in fifth generation warfare, you say. They did it. Look what they did to you. Yep. <clears throat> Just throwing that out there. That's. <clears throat> I think it's quite possible. It, it is. And again, everything is speculation at this point. And it would be my opinion that ISIS would have no problem claiming responsibility if that is in fact the truth that they claimed responsibility. Why? Because. There is nothing more dangerous than somebody who has zero self-preservation of their own life because if the world will just wipe itself out, then they will start anew and go do the thing that they do in heaven and hopefully everything will rebirth and be as it is in the in the uh, in that realm, if yeah. you will, right? I, so I, it, it it is the one thing that is terrifying and it is the one reason why uh, even though – even though we say that there are reasons why certain countries are not allowed to have nuclear weapons, it is because uh, we really only want anybody with self-preservation uh, tendencies to have new. We, I mean, really, we can all agree that nuclear weapons should not exist. Yeah, they should. Unfortunately, be nada. it's a fucking thing. It but we want to prevent them from the nations that uh, have no problem using them on everybody, including themselves, to turn this entire earth into a dust bowl right so and and because of that that's why i'm saying that yeah if they claim responsibility and russia does decide to go fucking nuclear then other people will probably go nuclear and where are we going to be what are we going to be left with i don't know if russia will go nuclear i Uh, i I highly doubt it because whether you like it or not i think putin might be smart Oh yeah, no. He's I mean, it's, it's a fair, it's a fair kind statement. Of, it's kind of been in power for quite some time now. Yeah, and I don't know if you guys watched the Tucker Carlson interview, but that motherfucker has Russia's history back to like fucking one eighty. Okay, yeah. This guy, he's his brain still works. No, no. Yeah, he, yeah, he's highly intelligent. He, he, he knows exactly what he's doing. Yeah, and he likes puppies. And, and the ultimate, <laughs> and the ultimate, the ultimate goal is, uh, you know, Soviet expansion. The right. old. USSR Soviet expansion. I mean, that's that's essentially what he wants. That's what he's looking for. That's what he's going for. It's very apparent. This isn't conjecture. He's doing it right now. Right. So, so 
Yeah. It's, if this gives him the opportunity to, uh, you know, take a little take a little land from the Middle East and get back into the stands, right. then he will. Right. And it's and it's, you know, with with all these thrown out, we might as well throw out too. What if Russia did it to themselves? Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. Ooh, what if? What if? It wouldn't be the first time a government's done something to themselves to provoke a war. <laughs> I'm just gonna leave that one right there. <laughs> just <jump>. passports. <laughs> Passports found. <laughs> Anyways, uh, <laughs> uh, dark. Uh, dark. Anyways, no, I mean. uh, what was I about to say? Religion and spirituality. We were talking. Sure. You were saying how <clears throat> someone who does not have self-preservation. Okay. I think spirituality is really good, and this might irk a little to some people. Well, we might see some subscribers drop here. We see subscribers drop every time we do a podcast. This might be more. Religious is <laughs> religion, religion is very dangerous for humankind. Now I'm I'm not saying to not practice your religion as long as you're not hurting people. That should be pretty simple. Um, but I think religion has done a lot of good in the world, but it also drives people towards that extreme territory, like everything does. So right. I'm not just saying I'm not just singling you guys out. But we see this, you know, if a religion says that. Yours is the last word of God. That's dangerous territory. Or it says that killing yourself in the name of your God is a righteous act. That's dangerous territory. Of course, yeah. Because that can almost incite violence if your religious leaders are saying those people are the enemy. Yep. That goes for a lot of people out there. But that goes for a lot of religions that out there. That goes for a lot of religions out there. And that's they, why I'm they not all, naming them. That's exactly. Yeah. They all primarily in some way, shape, or form condone that behavior if interpreted that way. Right. Right. And it's the interpretation of the doctrine. It is never the doctrine explicitly saying. Um, and often what you'll find is uh, the people that are you know behind the, uh, a lot of these attacks obviously have a very extreme viewpoint of what that says. And they'll take things like certain words, certain phrases out of these books and they will say, well, this clearly means that we're supposed to do this, that, and the other. <clears throat> which is pure hubris, mind you. Of course. Which is which is under the idea of religion. Fun religious talks. I love it. I know. Yeah. I, love, I, love, uh, I love these talks. But anyways, taking what is supposedly, quote unquote, the word of God, mm -hmm. and then deciphering it as man, mm. and then assuming to know what an all-powerful creator meant. There it is. That's and the then, hubris. And then and then pushing that on others as you know what right. it's meant. How the fuck do you know what it means? Right? Why don't you read it for what it is? Just a thought. Why don't you take it out of the uh, doctrine? And so it's almost like, like guess, taking a specific line out of the Bible and making an entire cult about it. Yeah. And I mean, good pastors like the <clears throat> the church that I've recently been attending, mm -hmm. uh, they will they will read it. And then very specifically say, I'm not going to even try to describe this or explain this or twist this. He just says, this is what it says. This is what was going on mm -hmm. uh, during this period of time. And not here's what God meant by this. Right. There's the hubris, yep. right? But more so, here's how we can apply something just like this in our lives today. And then yada, 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 and here we go. And then they talk about real life events where that that's applies. That's how it should be. And that's how it should be. Right. Right. And so it's just kind of drawing a parallel between, you know, when these things were written and where we're living right now and how we can live the most effective life and, and, you know, just, uh, honor, uh, honor each other and, and do the right thing. And, uh, and I'm glad that we're headed in that direction. At least most churches in the United States seem to be heading in that in that direction. But you know, the this there is select few. There's even a few in our industry that you know grab onto those uh, particular phrases, right? And really, you know, become kind of culty. And that's not what it's all about. No, so it really isn't. Yeah. But I mean, enough about religion. If there's yeah. any way to lose friends and subscribers, then That's true. let's talk about that. You Which know? is interesting because, <laughs> because most of them, most religions want to convert you and want you to believe them or preach to be kind to those mm -hmm. who believe other than you. Yeah. Throwing it's that out there. Usually way, the throwing, way it works. Throwing that one out there. What else you got for us I've got on, some, the, on the docket? I've got some good stuff, dude. I've got a question. Some creamers. That is rocking the internet right now. What's the question? Should illegal immigrants 
have Second Amendment rights. Aliens. 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 Xenomorphs. Uh, Xenomorphs. <laughs> uh, should they have Second Amendment rights? Yeah. Fucking no. But why is that? Pray, pray why, tell, do tell. Why? Yeah. I'm. I, let's dive in. Let's, <laughs> let's get into this. People that have people enjoy the freedoms of our constitution that aren't supposed to be here in the first place. Seems pretty cut and dry to me. Okay, that's fair. Okay, what, devil's you, advocate you've, you've, counterpoint. You've got another De- <laughs> des- devil's advocate counterpoint. Okay, one of our top arguing phrases, I guess, arguing lines. Okay, is that it's dissenting opinions? No, that it oh. is a God-given right. Oh, that it is not a constitutional right. The Constitution just upholds the God-given right. Hmm. So does bitch. it matter what country that is from? a fantastic viewpoint, man. Like it really is. I still don't know fully where I stand with it. Damn. Well, since you bring that up, cause you have to take it back. You have to peel back the constitutional you layer gotta peel and those onions. You got to, if you peel back the constitutional layer and what stands behind it, it is a God given right to defend yourself. Right. Yeah. It is the, is the right to self-preservation, the right to self-preservation. Yeah. In the most, in, in whatever means you see fit. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, fair right. enough. Yeah, so like, yeah. So like I see... I'm not saying it's swaying my opinion on that because right. I stand a pretty hard line. Like if you want to enjoy the freedoms and the benefits of being inside the United States, including your constitutional rights, then you should get here how you're supposed to get here like everybody else did. I agree. Uh, but that does beg the question, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, good, good, good uh, retort, if you will. Right. Yeah. And mm-hmm. so I see... And again, you know, I, I, I love tearing this shit apart and digging into it because the idea is, well, no, illegal aliens shouldn't because they're criminals and those criminals shouldn't have guns. Okay. What have we been saying forever? Criminals don't give a fuck about gun laws. True that, girl. Oh, the, the cartel are coming across the, the border illegally and then they're just getting guns they shouldn't have. They're going to do it anyway, so that's what we've been preaching. Do you have any specific information on, like, who is pushing the agenda for illegal aliens being allowed to own firearms? I think there was a uh, story recently. I'll put it up if I find it. I, it was going around as I'm a just, couple memes I'm recently. Just cur- I'm just curious as to, like, the source. Like, what, you know, what congressman, what senator initiated this? I think this? it was just a news story about an illegal immigrant mother who okay. came over with her kids and got a gun. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Uh, I think I don't. I don't know. Right. So that's something that I want to dive into a little bit as far as like being able to investigate that before I speak more on it. But if it is, uh, you know, being defended, uh, I'm assuming. I, I I wouldn't. I can only assume that this would be defended by the uh, liberal party, by the Democratic Party. Um, but if if that is the case, then it is really unfortunate because, you know, as our rights are being stripped away from us, these rights are then being granted to those that shouldn't be here, which is really that's fucking wrong. unfortunate. Yeah, that's absolutely wrong. I, don't know, I just <clears throat> it's I just, weird. It's, it's, a, it's, it's an it, interesting uh, question. Yeah, yeah, it is. No, it's good. Um, <clears throat> speaking of Let which, us know what you think down in the comments below. Indeed. Colorado is uh, about to join California. Colorado? What are Colorado. they, a 10-day wait or what? Uh, what are we talking? Assault weapons ban. AWB? The AWB. Yep. It Colorado, just, no. Just, yeah, mul- well, it past sense. multiple layers of uh, of votes and multiple layers well, of I their mean, Congress. And I think that thing is uh, about to be uh, enacted into law. I think the governor just has to sign it now. I may be wrong. Correct me if I'm oh, wrong. Dude, but, they're um, probably fucking running for it right now. Yeah, I because know. Because yeah, with they're, what's they're, going on with Bonta? Yeah. Have you, oh. did you see the oral argument? Yeah, I, I, wa- I was watching it live and then I had to, like, I got cut off and I had to go into a meeting. And what was interesting is like the, the most interesting part about watching the Bonta thing live for you, those of you don't, that don't know, it's the, they were, Mag- they, they were arguing about the magazine, the 30 round magazine ban there. I dare I say high capacity, I'll call it standard capacity magazine. In fact, even our, we have a high capacity magazine license. So issued by the state of California here at uh, Tacticon. So if you see us shooting more than 10 rounds, uh, it's because we can, uh, <laughs> it's because we should be able to, but um, <clears throat> we have crossed the high out on the, uh, on the paper, on the, on the paper and wrote standard. Um, 
I love but it. But anyway, these these guys were uh, the judges were arguing <laughs> with each other probably more than uh, <laughs> probably more than the actual attorneys were arguing with the judges. Dude, it was interesting to see the oral arguments for. I can't remember which which person Vibonte it is, but it gave me an aneurysm. Yeah, it definitely felt like oh, the judges bad. were biased. Not all of them. Not not all of them. No, not all of them. There was there's four of them that are definitely most of them were the them. old women. Yep. Oh uh, yeah. And then yeah. that dude sitting next to the uh, balding lady. Okay. Uh, <laughs> the old guy sitting next to the Asian guy. I don't. I you nailed it. I don't. Yeah, I, mean, really, I don't know the judges' names. Really, I don't care. really narrowed it down. Uh, there was one dude that was uh, that was actually offering some pretty compelling arguments, all the same things that we say. Mm -hmm. Like, what would make this more dangerous than anything else? What would make this less common use than anything? I mean, the right. guy was like on his shit. Yeah. And I was like, damn, dude, it's really good to have somebody like that on the panel. Yeah. But the, what was interesting is at one point, one of the judges was saying that they were arguing for some reason when the CRPA lady was up there, these judges that I definitely feel have a bias, um, were arguing legalities rather than the case. They yeah. were arguing about the panel and why the panel is the way it is versus the actual fucking case. Well, yeah. And <clears throat> to elaborate that on a little bit, the, <clears throat> the thing that they were trying to argue is why does this case, why should this case be heard again? Right. Why do we need to even hear this case again? Because this case was already heard and technically it ended in a seven to four uh, decision against, you know, uh, high capacity magazines. And so that was kind of the back and forth is should we hear it again? Shouldn't we hear it again? Well, the argument on from one side was it should be heard again because. There was no decision made in the first place, and this is a panel of new judges and old judges. Like because they already have senior judges on the panel that's heard it before, it's it's kind of a moot point, right? Mm -hmm. That was that was what they were. Okay, it, am, am I'm tracking. I, am I right? Like that. That's what they. That's what I heard them arguing about the most is like whether or not they should even be. I blacked out when they were arguing <laughs> about it because I was just like, why are we not talking about the fucking case? Yeah. No, I, I you're, mean, agreed. You're, you're agreed. wasting fucking time. Agreed. But what I found hilarious is while this older lady judge was arguing, she said something along the lines of, well, that's, that's basically what we did. That's, that's almost exactly what we did in the previous ruling. And one of the other judges was just like, that's not at all what we did. No, like you're completely wrong. That's yeah. not at all what we did. <laughs> you're not even close. And which just, just throws wide open the doors of this system's fucked guys. Yeah. If you have judges on a panel who are either a making up or completely fucking lying yeah. about what they did in a previous ruling or B can't remember what they did in a previous ruling and trying to use that as rhetoric for their current ruling. That's fucked. Yeah. <laughs> I also saw, it was super funny. The older guy that I was talking about next to the, uh, Asian fella. Yep. Can I say that? <laughs> Asian fella. Yeah. Yeah. You can say that. Yeah. Uh, so the, the younger guy was texting and the older guy was like, <clears throat> he said something like my brain's fried or like, I'm not as smart as I used to be or something <laughs> along those lines, like saying that he was dumb. And, and this guy just fucking, he's texting. He just starts fucking chuckling. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, you are stupid. Yeah, it's all a big fucking joke. man. It is man. Yeah. There, there should be, in the realm that we're in now, there should be no way that California can look at this case and go, these magazines that hold more than 10 rounds thus make California more dangerous with one, the amount of crime California has, and two, the amount of magazines that are currently in circulation. Look at it like mm, this. That's what they kept talking about. They kept talking about common use, and it goes, it goes right back into... Like if you reference Heller, if you reference Bruin, they kept referencing those Supreme Court right. decisions. It was like, this is a cut and dry case. I don't even like one of the judges on the panel that was clearly in the favor of the Second Amendment just kept saying like, I don't even know what we're doing here. You know, like he just kept saying like, this right. is it's dumb. very apparent. It's that, a waste of time. Yeah. It, it, he kept saying, and it's so true. It's irrelevant whether or not it's dangerous. It's common use. Right. It's irrelevant. We stop saying that it's dangerous. We don't, wh what is the this is a cut and dry case. It's common use. It should be allowed, period, end of story. 
Well, what's what's fascinating to me is these judges, the ones that are, are like asking the questions or arguing for, doesn't it make it more dangerous? Doesn't it make it more dangerous in, in California? The magazines are already here. It's not like when they put the magazine capacity law into effect that those magazines disappeared. Yeah. There are still 30 round magazines grandfathered in. And then from Freedom Week. Yeah. Tons. tons, Metric fuckload. Yeah. I don't know how many, but I can only assume tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, maybe. I don't know. I mean, there was a lot of magazines. I know. I got a lot. Yeah. Everybody did. Everyone and their mother did. Yeah. That was just for you guys that don't know what Freedom Week was in California. It was when they... <clears throat> when they issued uh, Benitez, it was a couple of years ago. I think it was two or three years ago, three something three. like that. It wasn't it 2019. I think it was 2019, it, April it was, 2019. So it right? was. It was actually longer. Yeah. So it was it, 20 April 2019. And basically, what happened was uh, uh, Benitez had struck down that it was unconstitutional, and they uh, they never there was there was a week gap before they put a uh, before they overturned it. Before mm-hmm. they overturned it, he put a stay on yeah. on the injunction, yep. and then it was like a week gap before they overturned it. And so during that week, it was like it was it was freedom free week. It was free reign. It, that's why they call it Freedom Week when everybody can go out and get their thirty round mags. And then there was a lot of companies that were willing to ship to California just based on the fact that they knew the law was going to protect them by doing yep. so. Yeah, and they had that stay. Yeah, and, and so they did, it, and, and it, that's awesome. And it flooded the market, and now they're here. And there's nothing they can do about it. So, yeah, trying to what are you gonna do? You can't you can't take them back. You can't go get them back from anybody. No, so. I, I would I would almost say. And now this is pure speculation, but I would almost say that only new gun owners at this point have the limited capacity, right? Based on what I've seen, based on the knowledge that I have. Yeah. So in the state of California, I would argue that almost. of gun owners in the state of California have a magazine over 10 rounds. Yeah, probably. Yeah, most likely. And it's not hard to get a magazine that is, that is over 10 rounds. I mean, it's very, very simple to do. You could 3d print it. You could 3d print it, but even more, even easier than that. You could just buy a blocked 10 round magazine in a 30 round format and pull the block out. And that is what everybody does. It's, it's not hard to do. Only I mean, criminals do that. Yeah. Well, you become a criminal the second you do. So. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't. I don't see anything wrong with it. Uh, obviously, um, the military's got it. Then we should get it. That's but the exactly gun, gun, right. The gun laws, just in general, um, they're just uh, they're they give me a headache because they don't I make know. it. They just don't make any fun. They just like it doesn't you, make sense. None of it makes sense. Like why the NFA regulates SBRs as a dangerous weapon because a short barrel rifle is less dangerous than a long barreled rifle, but it falls under a more dangerous weapon. It's because I can and hide I could, it in my ass. I could, dude, it, it's, it's insane. It's like if you took a short barrel rifle that is seven and a half inches, there is clearly, there, there's a significant reduction in the velocity of that round. And when you have a significant reduction in the velocity of a round, it creates less energy, therefore making it less dangerous. It has less propensity to penetrate body armor. It has a higher, it has a less propensity to cause damage once entering the flesh. It has less propensity to go farther, right? So yep. sh- shooting at a distance, it is a less dangerous platform by every definition of the term outside of the fact that it can be easier that it can be concealed easier. So no sense. It, it drives me crazy from a physics perspective, from a scientific perspective, it is a less dangerous firearm. Any way you slice it, you cannot like try to make it more dangerous in any capacity other than, well, you can hide it better. Dude, It did, you think anybody gives a shit about hiding a rifle if they're walking into a supermarket and no. doing damage? They don't care don't if it's, they will shoot everybody outside Look. on the way in there and then shoot everybody in there. Look at the church shooter recently, the uh, the one at uh, my church. Okay. Um, <laughs> oh, what? Joel Austin's church. Oh, Joel Austin's church, right. Uh, right. She just walked in, had yeah. a trench coat. 16-inch rifle. There you go. 
trench coat, right? So now what? Twenty four inch rifles, right? Is that is that where we draw and the now line? Now we go to shotgun length. Yeah, it's just like twenty. Now they just bro. hike up their sling a little bit more. Yeah, I just it, it doesn't it it doesn't make any sense. Like none of these things make sense. Waiting for ten days in California to purchase a firearm after you already after own you one? already own a hundred firearms. Yeah, it it's crazy. Well, and like that was it's funny because I know we talked last podcast about um uh how I was having you know how I was having dinner with. Uh, some, you know, some guys in my neighborhood, some like friends that we have in the neighborhood Jeez. and people that tout like, ah, I, you know, you know, I'm, I'm definitely a Republican and, and it's nothing against these guys, but it's, it's even the Republicans in the community who, uh, just don't, aren't necessarily educated on the second amendment and really what it means will say things when we're in conversation like this. When I said I was talking about that ten that ten day cooling off period, no matter how many firearms you had, and you know, one of them was like, "Well, I mean, I can, you know, even as a Republican, I and you know, supporting the Second Amendment, first things that came out of his mouth, I can respect that. Uh, if it was your first firearm, or I'd probably, he, you know, I, he said I probably limited it like two, right? So if it's your first two firearms, because you know, you have two hands, right? So. But every, anything beyond that, it wouldn't make sense. If you've got two or more firearms, like three or more firearms, then you you should just be allowed to get it right away. And it's that type of stuff. That's that's where we. Well, that's why we are where we are. Because even you know, even the Republicans who are voting in the state, even uh, even the guys who um, would traditionally support and stand up for the Second Amendment, don't really understand what the Second Amendment means, which is. Like, really, it's just kind of the last words in the Second Amendment, which is shall not be infringed. It's like you just can't don't fuck with it no matter what in any way, shape or form. It's just a reminder to the fucking government. Hey, hey, people can have guns. Fuck off. Yeah, don't just every, you know, like all the other amendments, like fuck with those. But this one, this particular one, one. shall not be infringed. Yeah, not that one. (laughs) Like a quick reminder (laughs) to the U.S. government as well as the people out there listening. A well-regulated militia means well-maintained and organized. The U.S. was founded by militiamen, was founded by people taking up arms. The, the, what was it, the Continental Army? Is that, is that what it's called? I'm, uh, bl- I'm blacking out right now. The Continental Army? That, that, was, that was 1776, right? That's what, Congressional Army? What, Con- what? Continental, could the Continental Army? I, th- I don't know. It could have been the Civil War. I, there was the Revolutionary Army. I, I don't know. I, Anyways. I, yeah, you should probably cut that out. I'll put it like in idiots. there. <laughs> uh, the army <laughs> that became the United States or that was founded. I'm cutting that out. <laughs> Just that whole section. The army that fought the Redcoats. Um, yeah, yeah, there we go. There it we was go. fucking farm boys. Yeah. They weren't, they weren't trained. So, like, even yeah. at the end of the war, sure, you could consider them an, an army. They were bros that were like, fuck you, let's yeah. go. And our founding fathers knew that that was more powerful than a standing army, and they didn't even want a standing army. Right. They were like, this will be a tool of the government. Yeah. Thomas Jefferson literally said that. Yeah. So it's like they, they fucking knew. They knew. They knew. Yeah, they knew that a that a, uh, a a federal government that acquired too much power, which now here we are, it clearly surprise, has, surprise. will uh, will 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 be corrupt, and it's just it's inevitable. And here, you know, here we are, you know, trying to claw back our rights with a with an agency that is just so powerful that unless everybody literally binds together and says "fuck you," we're going to do what we want, whether you like it or not. It's it's going to be very difficult to uh, to get away from these regulations, and so now, it, think about it like this, man. If we all like stood together and just did a thing, there is literally nothing they can do about it. Nope. There's nothing they can do about it. Nope. If people were just like, "Fuck you, ATF. I'm going to do whatever I want with every firearm I want, whenever I want." There is zero chance they could do a damn thing about it. In fact, they would probably have to change the law because it would just make every American in the United States criminal at that point. And they'd be like, well, we can't have that. Okay, fine. You guys can have this. Right. Yeah. But people don't see the importance of it. And they won't see the importance of it until it's too fucking late. And that is the problem. And then- Well, you make life too easy. 
And then they're going to come knocking on the doors of the guys that are prepared, guys like you, guys like me, guys, the people that are listening to this podcast right now. And they're going to be like, hey, this is uh, John from across the street. Uh, shit's going on right now. Do you mind if we stay with? Nope. Sorry. Resources for me and my family. You should have done the thing and stop judging me when I was going out every Saturday training. Well, I know that when <laughs> when the world goes to crap, I'm heading over to your house. Yep. <laughs> it's a very common thing that people it's, say. It's like, no, you beta cuck. Yep. Get out of here. No. Yeah, get the fuck out of here. Get out of here. You should have been coming over to my house when I was leaving for the range. That should have been the time that you came over. Or you come over to my, my house. Or should have came over to my house and was like, hey, uh, thinking about buying a firearm and training, what do you recommend? Right? Yeah. Those are the types of things that you should have been doing. Hey, I'm trying Not, to be a warrior. Right. Trying to be a warrior in a garden. That's right. So, uh, you know, I, I truly hope that it doesn't get to that point, but man, we are getting real close. We're getting real close, brother. Yep. It's a, it's a interesting, interesting position we're in. So I've got another question for you <clears throat> since the last one was such a fun doozy. This was asked by the boys in our discord Ooh. or it was a uh, salty stash. I believe the boys are back in town. It was a uh, salty stash. He asked at what point does a company become irredeemable? And I thought wow. this was a great question. That is a good question. Yeah, because does this kind of segue into the uh, uh, Daniel defense and Ruger response to do you yes, think the ATF absolutely. should be disbanded? Absolutely. Because I really yeah. want to talk about that. We yeah. haven't discussed that yet, have we? I don't we? think we've discussed that on the podcast. Touched, yeah, no, it really is. An in, it's an interesting it's an interesting point. Now, at what point can a company become irredeemable? Now, that is in reference to, I would only assume, because we can talk, there's many different avenues that could go down, but we're going to keep it on the lines of the Second Amendment. Is correct. that correct? Okay. Yeah. So, All right. we, so <laughs> we were initially talking about a Daniel Defense debacle, right? Um, which is what spun this question. Got it. So, um, I inherently believe that if somebody understands what they did was incorrect, they made a wrong decision in a particular moment and they come out and publicly not only announce that they've done so, but they also take the actions using their actions to make things right and to show that they're going the other direction. I don't think that there's any opportunity at any given time for them for it to be irredeemable. I truly believe that some, you know, that things, some people make mistakes. Now, it, I would only say that the exception would be how much damage has actually been caused in the process and was there irrevocable damage to the industry that cannot be repaired. As long as the damage can be repaired and you back off of whatever rhetoric that you were in and you say, you know what? I was wrong. I don't know what I was thinking in that moment. I've done it. I've said dumb shit before. All right, back up. Admit that you're wrong. Be a fucking man. Right. Turn that ship around. Uh, but if you've caused significant damage to the industry that cannot be repaired, I think that would be the point where it's irredeemable. That was well-worded. In my opinion. That was well-worded. That's kind of the consensus that uh, that we came to in, in the chat, which was as long as it's not like a sole proprietorship where the company is a person. Right. Where it, like, there's a difference between a company and the people in a company. Right. Right? That we kind of came to that I that. Are you thinking now when you say sole proprietorship, are you talking more as long as the decisions aren't being made uh, by a CEO yet they're but they're being made by maybe a board of directors or do you mean, what, what, what did you mean by that? I mean more like a, like, like a, a, a smaller, smaller organization, a smaller company, right? Okay. Small, we, like, we could almost be considered something like that. Of course we can. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're still technically a small business right. by, where we have more, by the government standards. Right. <laughs> where we have a face rather right. than a company. Okay. Right. Daniel Defense, even though Marty Daniels is Marty Daniels, yep. it's Daniel Defense. Okay. Where Tacticon is Jacob Dines. Right? Yes. Okay. Right. Okay. You see, see my point there? Got it. All right. I got you. So what, in your opinion, is worse? If I were to come out and say some stupid shit that got the Second Amendment in trouble, or if Marty Daniels were to come out and say some I think stupid both are equal. shit. I think both are equal. Okay. Be based on- Regardless of your like, size. Yeah, regardless, no matter okay. what. Everybody's got a responsibility in this industry to uphold the Second Amendment. Correct. Okay. And so like, that's what we kind of came to, which was like, you know, companies- 
a company and people are people. So it's like, if a company does bad thing, like you said, not everybody in that company agrees with said bad thing. Got it. Right? Yep. Understood. Which even goes here. And I'm sure there's plenty of people that didn't. That makes sense. And that's actually a really good point, you know, that just because somebody's working for Daniel Defense doesn't mean that they don't wholeheartedly support the Second Amendment. And I think right. there's a lot of <clears throat> dudes in that company that probably do. Right. You know, <clears throat> so, uh, but for. And we'll get into what, what's going on with DD here in a second. Yeah. But I think that's a good segue into it. And what, um, what they were asked in some level of a deposition at some point in time in Congress. Which I will play right now. Mr. Colloy, Mr. Daniels, we have heard today support for abolishing the ATF. Do you support abolishing the ATF? Uh, speaking on behalf of Ruger, no, we do not. We work closely with our regulators, and we do not support that. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Daniel? Yeah, I agree with Mr. Colloy. We, uh, we are licensed dealers, and, uh, and we are licensed manufacturers. We sell through... Um, we are regulated by the ATF, uh, and we are not in, in support at this time of uh, eliminating the ATF. Okay, the, the gentle lady's time. Great. What's that? So <laughs> was, uh, should, and, and the question, if I remember correctly, was should, should the ATF be abolished? Be, be abolished? Mm -hmm. And they both said no. Yeah, both Ruger and Marty Daniels. Here, here's an opportunity uh, for two behemoths in the industry. Massive. M massive. It's Boy Grande. Yeah. To, to truly make a difference here is it, it's it's what anybody would call a turning point or an inflection point in th they had a decision to make in that moment when the question was asked they could have stopped they could have paused they could have thought about it they could have waited to respond of how is this question going to affect the remainder of you know how is this question going to impact uh our Second Amendment rights as a whole, moving forward from here, can I make a difference? Can I can I use this platform to truly defend our rights? And they chose to go the other direction. The reason why is because, of course, they don't want to be fucked with. They're beholden to the government. They have all the government contracts. They want these people to I, continue to feed the money. I don't know what Ruger has in oh, government contracts. Oh, I don't know, but I know but Daniel Defense has a fuck ton of them. Yeah. And I'm sure Ruger's got their paws in the government Sup. cheese, you know what I mean? I, but I, I can't confirm that, but we can confirm that Daniel Defense does. And it was just a, it was a very strange, it was a very strange thing to say uh, for, you know, two men who were representatives of all of us, essentially. Right. Uh, and, and had the platform to do the right thing. They clearly didn't do the right fucking thing. Which is crazy because, like you said, these behemoths in the industry. Mm -hmm. Ruger's fucking massive and Daniel Defense is fucking massive. Both giant companies. Yep. They could have they could have been like, yeah, no, absolutely, get rid of the ATF for this, 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 and this. Like, because even, even if you're on the side of, hey, I don't like the ATF, there's still good people there and they're trying to do the right thing. Even if you believe that, I don't, but if you do, yeah, these are still the same, this is the organization, I should say. Yeah, This is the organization that will readily and does sign into law or sign, in, sign into verbiage, I don't know how the fuck that happened, that turns millions of gun owners overnight into felons for having a brace. Not to mention, let's just talk about the core issue here. Well, there's this, this is not the core issue. I, I apologize. I misspoke. But I find it to be an issue that you are taking an agency who is regulating drugs, alcohol, and tobacco. I'm not saying tobacco is a drug, but there's nicotine in it. Right? It is. Okay. Yeah. Uh, can, can we? Okay. First of all, it's alcohol and tobacco. And firearms. So right there, you are lumping in guns with drugs, with drugs. Yep. What the fuck is that about? Obviously there was some intent behind that when they were like, Hey, here's a couple of things that we're going to slap together. We're just going to, we're just going to take these things that are not in our constitutional right to have, well, technically just being it. I should be allowed to drink. I should be allowed to smoke weed. I should be allowed to smoke whatever the fuck I want without the federal government's consent. Correct. Period. Get the fuck out of the way. But you're going to take these two things who aren't that aren't explicitly protected under our Constitution, and then you're just going to throw it in with something that is. This is the last one. Yeah, just slap that in there too. Well, it wasn't. It's not the. What would it be? It would be the uh, uh, um, ATC. 
instead Alcohol, of the F- tobacco and cuckery and no and <laughs> communications oh right like freedom of speech right or the ats right like it's not alcohol tobacco and speech right L- let's w- say that <laughs> yeah let's change it real quick <laughs> like, yeah. wouldn't it, it's alcohol ju- tobacco and media alcohol t- yeah it would yeah it would ju- it would be just as ridiculous for the ATF to be the ATM, the ass to mouth, yeah. or the alcohol, tobacco, and media, as it would be for it to be ATF. the alcohol, tobacco, and firearms. Yet nobody blinks a fucking eye that we've lumped in firearms with alcohol and tobacco. And to me, it drives me fucking crazy because even the acronym, even the things that they're regulating with, it's in their name that it was there was intention behind these things are bad, alcohol and tobacco. I think we can all we can all agree that these things aren't good for you. And then firearms. This isn't good for you. This right. innate ability to defend yourself isn't right. good for you. <laughs> Get those My ability to fight off 17 Mongol warriors. <laughs> <laughs> I just I I feel like there should have been a little more credit given to something that even if you wanted to regulate it, break off and regulate it under its own agency. And right. I'm not saying they should have. What I am saying is that it needs its own thing. Can I, you don't get to do those two things and this too. Right. Anyway. No, 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 no. I'm off the soapbox. No, box. good. No, yeah. stay on your soapbox. I just want to interject because what I heard recently, and I need to do more search on this, but it's not a regulation ag- agency. It's more of a division of the IRS for tax purposes. Oh, I did. On, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. On yeah. alcohol tobacco so claimed right <laughs> so 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 proclaimed to be yeah yeah right okay and and you and you know what's funny is man like so I, then why I, are you regulating you I, motherfuckers I, I feel you're you're right actually like this entire time i'm like freaking out and bitching about it. but it goes back to exactly that you are right that is the truth it is it was it was a subsidiary of the irs to make sure that hey these things need to get like need to get taxed properly taxed properly taxed and so which is an oxymoron right and then it's the boil the frog right you throw a pot you throw a you throw a frog into a pot of cold water and nothing happens it stays in the water you slowly crank that heat up and it will just die in the water now you throw in a pot of boiling water boom frog junks out like hey don't Spit. do that so if they were to come out guns blazing and say, no, regulation, regulation, regulation. We're here to regulate. People would have been like, no, you're not going to do that. That's not what you're here for and get get the fuck out of here. But instead, yes, it was under the guise of an IRS subsidiary who was meant to collect taxes, who somehow became the enforcer of the law. And if that is the case, that you are in fact an ATF agent, that you are in fact designated law enforcement which they go around and they enforce our laws, well, then you should be protecting our laws. You should thereby say, what's the Constitution say? Cool. We are actually on your side. We are actually going to sue the United States federal government on behalf of the American people because it clearly states that these shouldn't be infringed and this is what they're trying to do. That's who the ATF should be, or really the F, right? Makes sense to it, me, It dog. should just be its own agency, first of all, and it should be the F agency. And that F agency should, in fact, stand by the people and say, we are enforcing the law. We are enforcing constitutional law to be able to protect yourself just like any other American citizen, just like any other human in the, around the entire planet should be allowed to do. So because they, because it's not, I mean, that's that's why everybody fucking hates them. Right. I mean, that's why it's not because like I don't get my 30 round or, you know, I don't get my short barrel rifle in there. No, it, it's it's not. I don't think that it has any. It Maybe there are people who think that that's not why I, that, that's not why I have a problem with them. I, I have a problem with them is because they they are they're they're truly infringing on the rights of American people. Not because I can't own a thing or the other. That, that's kind of irrelevant. It's it's the core of what they're doing. And the core of what they're doing is violation of the Constitution. And they are breaking the law. They are, in my opinion, criminals. So is any politician that is intending to po- impose a law and enforce a law that is, in fact, against the law. Just ask Waco, Texas. Yeah, I know. Hey, so how's everybody so fucking up in arms about that, you know? Like how anybody could be mad at the things that they were doing over there when they were like, no, you guys just get the fuck away from us and let us live our life. Well, what was interesting is I I just watched like 
a super long breakdown of Waco. Yeah. And apparently the uh, the guy, I think his name was, no, Randy Weaver was uh, Ruby Ridge. Whatever his name was. I forget his name. But he invited the ATF in. Mm. He was like, yeah, come on in. Come see what we're doing. Okay. Come, come take a look at everything. Right. And they turned him down multiple times. And instead they snuck onto his property. And then when one of them, I believe the story That's went, Ruby Ridge. No, oh, that was Ruby Ridge was entrapment. And oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah, because the I agent was like, up. "Hey, can you uh, can you chop down these shotguns?" No, no, I wasn't talking about that. Oh. I was talking about. I think I think it was wasn't it Waco? Yes, when they snuck onto the property on Waco, they were making their way on there, and the son shot one of them. That's Ruby Ridge. That is Ruby. That Ridge. is Ruby Ridge. Damn, I mixed them up. Waco is Silly where me. they burned down like the church building. Yeah. Oh, with all the people in it. Right. With all the women and the children. Right, 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 right. Yeah. And they did psychological warfare <clears throat> playing dolphin noises and constant noise constantly out throughout the night. Yeah. Anyways, um, go watch Wendy Goon's videos on them. They're great. But they're just an IRS agent. They, they're just an IRS agent. Hey, they're here to collect some taxes. Yeah, you know. <laughs> so let's let's talk about DD because we kind of got off. Yeah. So let's talk about no, we did. And we did talk about that. Well, we're talking it about goes the back ir to irredeemable. Yeah. So is it irredeemable what they did? I mean, the impact that that could have potentially caused. I mean, yeah. I mean, these guys had the opportunity and they haven't, he hasn't scaled back at all. He hasn't, you know, no, came back and said, from Marty Daniels. and you know, this is every, most people have seen it, you know, now they, you know, even the people that haven't seen it in, 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 uh, in the podcast, uh, the viewers have now seen it. So at this point, when the entire internet has seen what you said, it, it should be time to make a statement and say, look, you know what I said? I don't know what I was thinking in the moment. I was just following Ruger's lead. Or I, I was a bitch. <laughs> I was just being a bitch. And yeah, yeah I don't think that at all. Um, but, you know, the the pockets is really what they're looking for, man. And you know, they're, they don't want to they don't want to lose that government cheese. This, you know, this kind of plays into a video that I watched recently Um Lucas was invited out to Daniel Defense to, and he was asking if they were pro two A. And oh it, god, it, I, yeah. I don't want to get into that. I don't even want to talk about that. But what <laughs> what this spurred the thought in my mind of with Daniel Defense, if you were to look them in the eye, CEO Marty Daniels, the whole board, right, mm -hmm. and go, okay, are you pro two A or not? If the government said no more selling to civilians, you can only sell to us. Are you going to say okay, or are you going to say go fuck yourself? Yeah, that's really what it boils that down really to. That really is what it boils down to, and you can solve that in a 10-minute fucking Discord call. That's it. And Yeah, that, you don't need to travel all the way to Daniel Defense's headquarters that, to find that out. And that's the fucking question, right? Like, yeah. the, you know, they're supposedly talking about trying to rebuild their image or build their image or whatever. But the thing is, it's like, you've had so much opportunity. You've had so much time. Marty Daniels could have come out at any moment and been like, hey, we are for the people. Like, we have to play a fucked up game. Sorry. Yeah. Right? Could have. Anytime. Yep. Didn't do but it. But they didn't. Yep. They haven't. Right. I don't know if they will. I want them to. That'd be fucking sick. Great. I want more people on our side. Yeah. Don't you wish, like, sometimes you could just kind of manipulate, like, all-powerful manipulate time and say, I'm going to put this situation into effect where the government does give them that decision and then fast forward that fucking tape and just see how they react and then back off of it and then come back into reality Dude, and just I live your life. Powers. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> it just create this situation to see how people would really and truly behave. Right. Yeah. It's kind of like the, what's the quote? I forget it, but it's a, uh, a mask. Someone with a mask will always tell you the truth or something like that. Oh yeah. Something yeah. like that. Yeah. I've heard that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, man. Um, as far as being irredeemable though, I think it really just boils down to whether or not, you know, that caused, you know, permanent damage to the second amendment. I would venture to say that given the platform that they were on and the eyeballs that were on them and the people that were the lawmakers that were listening to them, it probably did. Well, well, two things that jump into my mind about, about it are <clears throat> one, they talk about their legalities and their legal issues, like with some of the shootings that have happened, um, with shooters having Daniel defense rifles and they're in, uh, oh, legal yeah. suits. Right. And yeah. that's one reason why Mar they haven't been marketing to, yeah. you know, children and things Ex like that. Except right. for the fact that firearms policy coalition, which is just a group of lawyers, uh, if I'm understanding correctly, 
That's what I see them as. A group of lawyers fighting for the Second Amendment. Their whole thing is scorcher's policy. Fuck you, no. Yeah. They say stack up or fuck off. Right. These are lawyers saying this. Right. So the fact that you haven't and using kind of like lawyers yeah. as like a scapegoat for that, I don't, mm -mm. I don't. No, you know I what I mean? I don't buy that for a second. Just do what's right. Like do what, exactly at, at, at the end of the day, just, just do what's right. And what the right thing to do is what's right for the American people. That, Cause that's all it that really matters. What's right for your countrymen. What's what's yeah. right for your countrymen. What's right to the, for the, for the guy to your left and your right, because these insanely large juggernauts in the firearm community can make such a huge difference. Like it's so we're trying to make we're you and I and and everybody at this company and the, and the guys that are listening to this podcast, we're all trying to make a difference, but, and hopefully we get there one day, hopefully we get big enough to, so that somebody can see the middle finger. What, right. What if, and I just, I, 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 I long for that day, right. not, not for notoriety, not for people to know who I am and we are and money or anything like that. I just long for the day that we've got a platform so fucking big that all we have to do is flip on a fucking switch and people will go, oh, uh, I see. Uh, yes. I understand why the fuck you're doing what you're doing. Right. I get it. Right. And we have the opportunity to do the opposite of what Daniel Defense is regardless of the backlash and the money that it's going to cost and the attorneys we're going to have to retain. Well, imagine, imagine if these gun manufacturers, imagine if these gear manufacturers, everybody in the Second Amendment space, these large manufacturers that have these DOD contracts, Yep. imagine if they went, hey, Uncle Sam, until you give the rights back to the people, we're not giving you shit. Oh, yeah. If they all They were scaled, like, fuck off. Dude, if they all scaled back and they were like, hey, you don't have anybody privately, it has to take us, it... It literally has to take everybody doing it in conjunction. But uh, do, it's the same thing with you Texas. Know, you know what, man? Like you, you're on to something, and you're right. Like if if so, if if we could all band together and get all these motherfuckers, they're owned by like say, four hey, conglomerates. We can figure this hey, out. <laughs> don't don't worry about the fucking lack of money that you have because all this is going to do is open up support for the entire American population that's for each so and every funny. one of you guys. Where we all get together and all these companies pull back all contracts with the government and say, you don't get shit until we get our rights back. Right. That is the fucking answer, it's, bro. Like and that this, is it. It's the same idea it's, of it's, it's a company versus a person, right? Because like I can see from one side, the, the company's going, well, we're trying to support the soldier. We're trying to support the law enforcement police. Yeah. I get that. But also they're part of the agency, yeah. right? Just like you're part of the company. Yeah. So we got to look at that and go, <clears throat> sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Well, imagine this. Well, we've got to be able to protect ourselves, and that involves arming soldiers so that we can go, no, no. No, no. We don't need to go anywhere, dude. No, no. We need to be right here, and the Americans need to have the guns. And it was very well said by that Japanese emperor that said, behind every blade of grass is an American with a rifle, and that's why they won't come fuck with us. So if you pulled all of the resources back from the government from supplying them with firearms, even for a day, if you were like, no more— Fuck off. Can you imagine how fast they would fucking scramble to be like, okay, you know, I would they, like these to guys, imagine, yes. Democrats, Republicans alike would all scramble together and go, fuck, we don't have guns. We need to figure this out. They're going to stop making them. How can we make this work? Well, They're it's gonna pretty simple. Our, They're their gonna boots, say, their pants, <laughs> their jackets, their <laughs> bags, their fucking yeah. guns, their bolt carrier groups, their optics, all of yeah. it. The problem is... <laughs> What's the problem, Jacob Dines? The problem is is the greed of the human being will innately look to capitalize on that and say, ooh, 99% of them aren't going to. I don't give a fuck. I want to make a buck. Don't worry, Uncle Sam. I'll give you what you want. I'll give you what you want. That's the fucking problem. That's problem. why I genuinely believe that it is just sheer human nature why something like that could probably never work yeah. because there'll be the one guy it's just like the there's a word for the guys there's always a green worm tongue dude yeah help me out in the comments or you might even know what it is um when there is a um uh, a protest it's not a protest when workers uh strike strike so during during a strike if you are the guy that doesn't strike and goes to work, there's a name for, for those. And anybody, I, I guarantee will get the name in the comments. Yeah. I just forget what it is right now, but it, it's not a good look No, it's when, bad. when your union is striking for something and you're like, I'm, I'm just going to go to work, just going to go to work. Right. Even so, but there will be one of those. Yes. 
there will there will be one of those, if not some of those, that are like, now's my time to get the contract. Now's well, you, my time to be like, hey, you, I'll do it though. You watched Lord of the Rings, right? I read the books when I was a kid. Okay. Yeah. So, so I'm familiar I'm familiar with it. It's just been a long time. You know, you know the guy that whispers in the king's ear that is like draining his life. Oh. Yeah. Sounds familiar. Yeah. Okay, go ahead though. Explain. Uh, let me just show you a photo. Well, yeah. But you. explain to the listeners a, a of Grima, what he is doing. He's a Grima Worm Tongue. Okay, that's his name, Grima Worm Tongue, and he uh, he works for the bad guy, and he is essentially sapping the life from the king, keeping okay. this place down, fucking putting the nasty rule on it. Oh, okay. But he's not the king; he's his right hand, little slippery he's fucking. The, he's the handler. Worm. Yeah, yeah, got it, got it. And showing me a picture probably won't do a whole lot right now because you I, can get an well, idea. Well, because I read the book, right. so I didn't see it. There, there weren't photos. In but the book. he looks like this. Oh, I see. Yeah. yeah, that kind of explains it all. It makes makes total sense when you when mm -hmm. you see the photo with it. They yep. did great. They did great. Grima worm tongue. But that's the guy, right? Yeah. That's the slippery little fucking slime ball who's like, now's the time. I'm gonna do it. Yep. Yeah, and it's just like, God, fuck you. Yeah, and it could be anybody with enough manufacturing capacity to do, right. you know, anything. And then, and the problem with that is, once one does it, then another one's going to be like, well, I can do it too. They're yeah. doing it, and then yeah, I can do it. Yeah, they're doing it. Too. I'm going to do it. It would, it would really would take a like a like a national convention of all of us to come together, every single last one, all the way down to the guy with an FFL in his garage, just to go, all right. The buck stops here with us. We're the one making it. If we yeah. want to give the rights back, we've got to do this thing. It, but that I'm didn't not even happen fighting against the British. <sighs> I know. That's the it, unfortunate bit. No, it was 3% of the population. 3% of the population joined forces and said, nah, this isn't going to happen. We're not going to support the ground. I think it was closer to 10. Oh, was it? I think so. Oh, I, I think it was... there's, there's, there's some rhetoric thrown around. Okay. I think it's closer to 10. But it was a small subset. Still, yeah, 10. it was a minority. Yeah. Either way, it was a minority. So maybe it, you know what? I, we've been sitting here talking. It's going to take every single one. I Maybe now I don't, I don't know if it would, you know? Like if you just pulled enough manufacturing away from it to make it hurt, right? To yeah. really feel the fucking pain. Feel the sting. Right? And especially if it was some of the bigger ones that are like, yeah, we do 30% uh, of the firearms for the United States government. We do 10%. We do 2%. We do 3%. Like if and Cry then pretty Precision much, started pulling back. Yeah. If Daniel Defense started pulling back. That's right. If HESCO started pulling back. Yeah. Yeah. The body armor manufacturers yeah. started pulling back. Because it doesn't, it's not just the gun companies. No. I mean, it's everybody making any level of defense Why equipment. Why can't you own body armor in, was it yeah. New York? Can you New imagine Jersey? if all it would take is really Lockheed? <laughs> well, that's, that's government energy. So yeah, I'm just, I know. Like I know the, it's yeah, private. That, yeah, yeah, I know. But if somebody in there was just like, no, no. or if the workers in there were just like, nah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're, just, we're not coming to work today. We're not doing the thing. Yeah, we're not. Yeah. We're not. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, it would, it would be impactful, but, um, this is, this is going to segue and this is not a plug. This is, I mean, it's a, it's a plug, but it's a plug for a legitimate cause. And this is, this is what the two way pro actual marketplace that we are building right now is meant for. It is right. meant for it. It is to funnel a bunch of money into an agency, which is the marketplace, AKA the Amazon for guns, if you will. Right. Which will allow people to purchase things. And then a percentage of all those purchases as you would have had on Amazon or eBay or any other platform, except you can actually sell guns and defense equipment and any two way equipment that you want to on it that we've built. Imagine if that got as big as Amazon. Imagine how much power that could be. By the way, for the for those of you that don't know, that is a it is a marketplace that any seller can go on to that we're working on right now. We're just trying to get the payment processor up and running. That if you go on there, 100% of the profits of that company are getting donated back into the Second Amendment. If we built, which we're trying to do, the juggernaut that can have the means, the resources that we could deploy – to make a difference. Imagine if Amazon put the full fucking weight of Amazon on the second amendment. Right. That is my intention. That is my intention is to become the ne next Amazon, not to, I'm not like there, I'm not, the profit is going to the second amendment. Right. So I'm but imagine if that was Amazon's fucking in game, right. That all of their profit, instead of going to space was going to 
directly into the Second Amendment. Right. Can you imagine the amount of attorneys they'd be able to retain, the amount Ew. of influence that they could have on the government doing the right thing? Dude, huge. I would like to think huge. 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 With a Y. Yeah. So, and the reason why I, I really bring that up, not just to provide exposure to it, is just to not sit here and say we're not doing anything about it. Right. Because we're doing what we can, and that's the shit we're trying to do, right? And if everybody just joined forces and said, I'm going to do this thing, I'm going to do that thing, I'm going to build this particular company, and, you know, part of me wants to say, hey, guys, go out there and start a Second Amendment company. Go out there and start supplying the government and get so fucking big that they need you and then scoop. And then cut them off. <laughs> Pull it back. Start de <laughs> dealing the dope. <laughs> and de then cut yeah. their supply. First hits on me, bitch. Yeah, first hits on me. You want some more? <laughs> yeah. Go develop that one weapon system that they fucking need. Go, you know? yeah, like, go develop like, the NSGW, dude. <laughs> yeah. And then just as soon as you get the contract, go, no. No. No, no. What unless, are you do about it? unless you give the rights back to the people Yeah, and they'll go, fuck, do I want this thing that will absolutely conquer every nation and, and keep us protected and keep this country as safe as it possibly can? Well, that thing ultimately would be arming the American people. But the second thing might be your thing that you could sell to the government. And then when they do it, then you could be like, cool, thanks guys. Here you go. Now you can yeah, have cool, it. Cool. Thanks. As <laughs> long as the people can have it too. Right. <laughs> so, right. I don't know, dude. I, I just, we're just like babbling now, but I love, I love the conjecture. Uh, I love the, you know, just the nonsense that, cause these are where conversations like this are where great ideas are spawned. We just happen to be doing it like live right now on camera, but no, this is going to be edited to shit. <laughs> yeah. Well, you I know, see what I, know, I mean, I know. yeah, I don't know, man. It's uh that, but that's where it needs to start. It starts with, you know, the companies you. who are supplying second amendment and it starts with you and you and me. and me. And that's why we're doing what we're trying to do. And that's why we have this. Cause podcast we can only we vote so hard. Yeah, that's it. And if there are more of them voters than there are of us voters, because they don't understand the fundamentals, I don't think they're. You don't get it, to communism overnight, kids. No, that that's what's happening. To you. It's just people aren't educated onto the fundamentals of the Second Amendment. They don't know it well enough. Right. I, I feel like they just there's just not enough, and they there's not enough education around it because it's not talked about in school. We don't grow up with our you know our teachers bless their souls, trying to do the right thing, going, hey, guys, nor are they allowed to. They no, get hemmed up they real quick. Anymore. Go, hey, like, this, this is why these things are really important, just so you know. Right. Like, this is why we have guns. You can't talk about that shit in school. For, so it's up to it's up to the parents to, to educate their kids about it. It's up to us. It's up to you. It's up to me to say, hey, kids, this is the reason why we've got this. And if there are not enough of us out there doing it, what happens is people just vote along party lines because, like, well, I agree with all these other things that – Democrats are doing. So, you know, voting against the second amendment isn't going to hurt, right? A, yeah. Because I'm doing the right Democrat thing. Right. You vote could be blue a, no matter who, dude. Yeah. Vote blue no matter who. Right. It, it doesn't, but it doesn't work like that. Like we've, we, if, if we need anybody to stand up for the second amendment, it is the Democrats. We are to get it. Like Republicans want it. Like yeah. we want Democrats to like the second amendment and I will like those any, I don't give a fuck what you believe in on the other side of that aisle as I'm doing this like <laughs> Again. Autistic thing on the table. I don't care what you believe in on the other side of the aisle. If you know, you're yeah, I, it, well, I do. I mean, socialism is bad too. So I can't say that, but for the most part, for the most part, we can all somewhere kind of meet in the middle and say, let's talk about the thing that is going to keep America prosperous. And I think we've all identified the fact that it's going to be a capitalism, B freedom of speech, C the ability to protect ourselves, not necessarily in that order. Well, it's important because C is the bedrock that maintains everything else. It is right. Cause with, without the means of protection, without the means of telling someone to fuck off and being able to get them to fuck off. Yeah. You don't really have anything else. Yeah. That's because, it. because again, right. Hypothetically, Let's say you get rid of all guns. They're gone. Poof. Well, now it's up to skill in combat. Yep. Do you want to go back to Genghis Khan? Because that's what happened. Yeah. You had somebody who came into power. They were skilled in combat. They fucked some people up. They got three or four boys. They fucked some more people up. Those three or four boys got three or four more boys. Yeah. All of a sudden, you got this massive fucking army, 
because you have this one asshole who's like, mm. I'm the best. <laughs> and just to, you know, my, I, I would have to say that, because somebody asked me this, uh, I think it was that same evening that we were having dinner. It's like, they said, are you afraid of like, what, what is the point, you know, what is the point of the second amendment? Is it to protect yourself against a tyrannical government? And well, sure. Yeah. That's a thing. I am far less scared of my government than I am scared of the people around me without a government. That's what I'm fucking terrified of. I'm terrified of human beings and human nature right? without some centralized form of like Without, without some not centralized form of government, but more of a uh, without it, without any laws. I am I am terrified of a lawless society. I am terrified of human nature attempting to govern itself. It's a great quote from the Italian Job. Okay. I trust people. I don't trust the devils inside them. Yeah, it, it really. That's what it boils down to. Yeah. I mean, that's 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 what it is. Because even without our current government. If it were to be completely dismantled today in a crazy hypothetical situation, right. it all just they're like, you know what? We're wrapping up, we're going home. Yeah. By the by the way, by the con Dios, but guys. Security's on you. Yeah. What's gonna form? There's gonna be another government. government <laughs> it's of what's some, gonna happen. Yeah. Somebody's gonna rush in there to go, but wait, my idea is the best. No, mine is. And then you get these little factions, yeah. and these factions are the things that I mean, I can explain it in a series. If you just go watch The Walking Dead. That is exactly. It's a human experiment. It's the human experiment, man, and that's yeah. what I'm terrified of. I'm just that. That whole fucking series was about what happens when society collapses. Right. It's each other. We. Zo- yeah. That's we, the humans it's, are it's always a, the problem. The humans are always the problem. It's not the government. It's us. Yeah. Inherently. Yeah. And the firearms yeah. are to protect us. Yeah. Yeah. And the reason we can say that is because the government is yes. all lizards. <laughs> <laughs> They're not even human. They're not even human. Yeah. No. Yeah. So, <sighs> yeah, really I don't is. know. I don't have much more than that. And uh, unless you've got a little, a little nibble to bite on. No, I feel like, uh, I feel like we could probably wrap that up there. Uh, I felt like I was gonna, I felt like there was something I wanted to say to something you said earlier. Okay. But now it's gone. Talking about, in the are you wind. sure it's not yeah. in there rattling around anywhere? No, dude. No? No. We would have to backtrack like probably like one conversation ago or was it multiple conversations ago? Three or four. And I don't even irredeemable actions and people in second amendment. Somewhere in between that and something else. So it's gone. So it's It's gone. All right. It was spurred on by like a phrase that you said. It was like it was like a sentence. Got it. And I was like, I have something to say to that. Yeah. And then I just didn't. Short of like rewinding this footage and then hopping back in Mm -hmm. here, I don't think you're gonna be able to figure it out. No. Sorry to say so. Sadly, it's true. Sadly, it's true. Well, with that, I love you guys. I do. This thank is you great. very much for sticking around yeah. this long. I think this to is the fun two one. of you that are still in here, because mm. we definitely lost all our female viewers. Thanks for that. In the beginning. <laughs> like right in the beginning. Right in the beginning. Right in the beginning. That's okay though. Yeah. Ooh. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um. I'm going to do something and you can, I know, I know. And oh, you no. could just totally cut this out if you don't agree with it. You're completely off but script right now. This I is wanna, a huge I script see that we there, have. I want to see if there's anybody still in here. There is. Lurking around. 100%. You think so? Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm only going to pick five of them, but there's going to be a word. And you're taking care of this? The word. Uh, damn it. Yeah. Probably not. Mm. Is that a problem? Can you help me with it? If I make it quantity three, what? What's my limit? Five? Not let's two, do three. Three. Three is my favorite number. Three. Okay. All right. So if there are still three people in here watching this, say the word. It's your word. Any word you want. Any word. It just has to be a single comment. And the comment is anything. But the way you do it is you reach out to me via Twitter. Oh. That's even more unique. Ooh, that's even more unique. Yeah. So it's not, should they comment and then also reach out via Twitter? Yes. Okay. Screenshot your comment. Screenshot your comment. And send it to me via on Twitter. On YouTube if you're still watching so that we can see who's still in here. Because that know. way I can get your information and it's not on YouTube. That's very true. Yeah. Find our account it's on Twitter. much and easier. And so, so here's what's going to happen. It's tacticon.com. Is if you... 
say the word. Via con Dios. <laughs> Fuck. Okay. Well, you already said it. That's what people are going to be like. Well, if no, you say the can, phrase. We can go. We can keep going. No, it's good. I like it. If you say the phrase, via con Dios. And you have to spell it correctly. And you have to spell it correctly, so go to Google first. I know that's fucking bold coming from me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <clears throat> if you say the word via con Dios, the phrase via con Dios. Con Dios. And you have to say it in Spanish. No, yeah. no translations. Um, we will choose three people who have commented that. And we will send out a treat free of charge to you. And I don't even know what the treat is. I'm just going to pick something random. It'll be something it could be like a, could be a plate carrier. Could be a rifle bag. Could be a mag pouch. Could be my flip Could be a sticker. Could be a patch. Could be a kissed and sealed letter from both of us. Could be anything. Don't know. But you'll receive something as long as you reach out to Twitter with, hey, I did this screenshot and um, and do, actually do it in the comments. Yeah. yeah. My mind is melting right now. Melting. And with that, <laughs> we, we bid, bid thee, thee aqueef. aqueef.